give a really brief support update, and then I'm going to talk about our um, current version of multiple resolution. Um, but I thought I'd start with telling you where you can go for help if you have any questions. And we have help documentation. We have a support website and email. You can create, you know, create support tickets online or email us. Um, we can, if, if you need to talk to someone for any reason, you can always set up a phone call as well. Um, and we have a Twitter account for um, announcements about um, you know, news versions of the schema or the extremely rare um, system outage. And there's also a, 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 a RSS feed and email that has the same information so you can get it in the um, So as far as what we've done this past year, um, so the year we've it, it iterated the schema two times. 4.3.4 um, is um, the most substantial revision is to support um, standards. We've had a standards content type for a, a long time but we're um, kind of expanding that to better uh, make standards more visible in our system. We added a standard designator field along with some other changes. Um, and those changes are still ongoing. Um, we actually have a standard technical working group that is very actively working on this right now. Um, 4.3.5 was just released last week and supports relationships, which is you know, still under development. So um, you can take a look at that. At that. And so, I think it's very important. This is important enough that I made a really ugly PowerPoint transition to emphasize it, um, which is not something I would normally do. 4.3.4 uh, and 4.3.5 are not 100% backwards compatible. Um, we've decided to use, reserve the element name for author names in the future and have changed name in the depositor information section to, depos to depositor name. Um, Aside from that, it is backwards compatible unless you're our depositing standards. Um, so we are, um, because of the new projects, we're, we're making a, adding a lot to the schema. Um, I know for prior to the past few years, we only really incremented this schema very infrequently, but we're, we are kind of moving it along more quickly. So whenever possible, you should look to the latest version, just so you're not caught by surprise if you decide to uh, discontinue anything. Um, so what kind of questions we, have we been getting? We continue to have a very busy support queue. Um, most of our questions are pretty routine, but some can be interesting. Uh, we've seen a big increase in tickets from end users in the past year, as opposed to um, just from members. Um, the cross ref metadata is becoming much more visible because of things like integrating with WorkIt and uh, a lot of the other projects. And people are um, finding us to report errors. Um, we've also had an increased interest in multiple, multiple resolution for both books and journals. So I'm going to go over multiple resolution for journals. That's what they exist now. And there's also a solution for books in many situations. And Mike's going to talk um, in more detail about our new co solution for books. And so, um, so multiple look, um, as you probably, I'm trying to rush through this. Um, as you know, we only want a single DOI to exist for an item whenever possible, but situations do come up where content lives in multiple locations. Um, multiple resolution is basically, it's assigning multiple URLs to a single DOI. Um, it's simple conceptually, but there's some coordination that needs to happen for it to work. So, this is an example of a multiple resolution interim page. Um, and this, this particular example is a, a trigger, trigger title, meaning that this, the um, title of this DOI is associated with Hesse's publication and hosti hosting of the ex existing content has been taken over by two archiving organizations. Um, so the DOI needs to resolve to all of them. So this DOI has four URLs attached to it instead of, so instead of going just to one, it goes to this lovely interim page with the list all four resources. So how does it happen? Um, for multiple resolution, there is one primary depositor, depositor and at least one secondary depositor. The primary depositor deposits the multiple resolution to the DOI, that's just a normal metadata deposit. Um, only the primary depositor is ever able to, 
to create a DOI and update metadata for the DOI. Once a member has decided that they want to allow multiple resolution for their DOIs, they need to contact Crossref so that we can set up any necessary permissions for secondary depositors. The primary depositor also usually creates an interim page and they um, unlock the DOIs, meaning they flag the DOI as being multiple resolution enabled. <coughs> um, all of your um, main deposit accounts are enabled for multiple resolution by default, so you can attach secondary URLs to your own content as long as you have it unlocked it in advance and of course you need to set up the interim first of all. Um, multiple resolution per permissions are enabled at the prefix level and the interim pages can be assigned at the title level. Um, we can have two primary de depositors assigned to a prefix. Um, that occasionally comes up. Um, every time it comes up, there's a problem and it's kind of a mess, so I don't recommend it. People overwrite their own, overwrite metadata and get confused about who's primary and who's secondary. And it just doesn't end up. And it's very hard to figure out what's going on. Um, so for the um, primary deposit depositor, you, you need to send in with either with a metadata deposit or as a standalone deposit, which is the unlocked information. You have to send in this unlock flag, which is uh, This flags uh, DOI as being multiple resolution um, DOI. Um, you also need to establish an interim page. This is just a basic HTML page. It can include a style sheets, JavaScripts, or whatever. Um, most of the page is static, but certain fields um, are when the DOI is resolved to this page are populated with the multiple resolution specific data. And it, um, so uh, you'd have um, the metadata, which is pulled from the deposit metadata. So you know, your journal title, author, page, member date, model issue, et cetera. Um, um, there's also a, the DOI itself. Um, there are labels that we use to identify which URL goes where. Um, so here's just an example of an interim page kind of marked up. We've got the, the metadata is pulled into wherever the metadata is. We have all these uh, different links with their um, specific labels. So the secondary depositors um, Pretty much, they create multiple resolution URL deposits. And they don't send us any metadata or any other information, just the DOI and the metadata. They send it to us, and they update it as needed. Um, and that's an example of a secondary deposit. Um, you, as you can see, it's just the DOI. It has the label that um, corresponds to the label in the interim page template and a URL. There, there, as you can see, this uh, the three variable Stanford University. That is where the clocks SU label um, URL is. Um, I also wanted to, to mention that we manage the interim page and permissions, but the multiple resolution is um, also recorded in the handle resolver. Each multiple resolution <coughs> relationship is. Um, this is this is like a record from a, the that. The DOI is an, an example. The um, labels and the URLs are included. So, um, but instead of resolving to the URLs, the DOI resolves to the interim page URL, which is up there. Um, and this lets us um, this lets you bypass the multiple resolution process if you want. Um, you can use the labels supplied in your deposit to to create a DOI link with a location parameter, and this instructs the resolver to ignore the multiple resolution status and resolve directly to the URL associated with the label. Um, so the primary URL doesn't have a label. It defaults to mode, goal, and as you can see there. So that's pretty much all I have for multiple resolutions. And if anyone have any questions, we go with that.
Thank you.